perhaps nowhere in the world have plants been as widely venerated and studied from ancient time as in India. Plants have intrinsic links with religion and traditional practices. Forests were once held as the abode of heavenly spirit. This veneration has in fact helped preserve many tracts of forests even in these times when their destruction is rampant. With diverse ecosystems, India is among the richest nations in terms of the sheer number of plant species. Terrain as varied as the mountains, rainforests and deserts are home to thousands of plants that typify the region. Unbelievably, even after a century of research, in just 40% of the total geographical area, the official estimate of plant species stands at 45,000. From as far back as 1500 BC, the therapeutic properties of plants have been documented in India. Indian medicine was classified by the ancients into three ecosystems. The Anupa Desa signifies marshy land. The Jungles Desa is typical of a dry region and the Sadharna Desa is a mixture of both these areas. Today, many of these ecosystems are severely threatened. All over India, deforestation has taken its toll. Many species of herbs and other plants that were once common are today on the critically endangered list. This is a direct threat to the wealth of traditional knowledge that India lays claim to. For the people who have depended on the plants of their environment for centuries, preserving this legacy is a challenge. In the heartland of Tamil Nadu, southern India, lies Chengalpet. Once covered by the thorny bushes of the scrub jungle, for centuries, this terrain has been home to the Irula tribe, snake hunters by tradition. Irula means dark people of the forest. They revere Kaniyamma, the goddess of the forest and trees. Although the forests have long disappeared, the Irula still lives by the ancient tenets of harmony with nature. In fact, Irula dwellings are marked by the presence of medicinal trees and shrubs. With no hospitals or modern medical facilities nearby, they depend wholly on the curative properties of plants. Lakshmi Amma is an Irula healer. She received the knowledge of plants from her grandfather. This man was bitten by a saw scale viper two days ago. He has returned so that Lakshmi Amma can check on his progress. Although she is respected by her community, most traditional healers find it an uphill task to gain credibility. Tribal communities all over India have unique systems of healing with plants. Yet, a lack of documentation and quantification of their practices has led to the steady diminution of this valuable knowledge. The shrinking of forest areas too has led to the non-availability of many plants that were once commonly used for healing. To document their science and to prevent the exploitation of medicinal plants in the wild, the Irula Tribal Women's Welfare Society was set up. Run by Irula women, the society's goal is to revitalize indigenous traditions and collate information. More than a hundred species of medicinal plants have been planted here. Plants that are usually dismissed as weeds have important healing properties. 
the mimosa pudica for example is used for bruises and cuts Many of these plants are also used by the irulas as anti-venom against snake bites. The irula women here have collected and preserved seeds of more than 700 plant species that are on the endangered list. This is the real wealth of the society. India is now intensely aware of the need to protect its indigenous wealth not only from environmental degradation but also piracy by others The neem tree best illustrates the growing problems faced by indigenous knowledge systems The pesticidal properties of neem have been used by Indians for centuries Yet an American company applied for patents on the properties of neem. Patents on the use of haldi or turmeric were also applied for. All these were successfully revoked. The real issue of protecting community knowledge and intellectual property is not merely to see how to prevent theft, is not merely to see what benefits can be shared with the community arising out of the use of a fraction of their knowledge or resources but it is a more complex program of trying to revitalize the local tradition so that the community can become self reliant in its primary health care needs through the use of their own local resources one needs to recognize the local knowledge one needs to encourage local people to use their local knowledge and to achieve certain degree of self reliance